Since 2016, individual landlords have sold more property than they bought. But at the same time, big investment companies are buying up UK property left, right and centre. So what's going on? Are big companies breaking the UK property market? Well, the team and I dug into the research and it's a bit more complex than it first appears. So in this video, I'm going to explain why more companies are investing in residential property, what this means for property investors and tenants, and why this might actually be a good thing for individual investors. So the best way to describe what's happening is to imagine the UK property market as a giant aquarium. On one side, you had the small fish, your individual landlords, and on the other side, the big fish, the corporations. And for decades, the two groups stuck to their side of the tank. The private landlords would buy individual houses and flats, while the corporations would stick to offices, shopping centres and warehouses. But recently, the big fish have started swimming across to the other side, and some of the corporate sharks do seem hungry. Because they're not buying one or two houses at a time. They're building huge complexes with the sole purpose of renting them out, and agreeing to buy entire development of hundreds of individual houses, which otherwise would have been sold to homeowners or private investors. This is called build to rent, and private companies are rushing into this sector for three reasons. The income stream is very reliable, rents tend to go up in line with inflation, and the residential housing market has been stable for years, despite rising interest rates, the pandemic, and everything else that's been thrown at it. But hold up. If the rental market is so stable and so lucrative, why are individual landlords rushing for the exit? Well, there are a few reasons, and I'll save the biggest one for last. Firstly, since 2017, private landlords started being taxed more harshly than people in any other line of business making it harder for them to turn a profit. Both the upfront costs and the ongoing costs keep on increasing. But this doesn't bother big corporations. Companies are exempt from the worst of the tax treatment, and they have teams of accountants to find clever ways to reduce what they have to pay. Secondly, there's been a steady drip of new and complicated rules for rental properties. And if you get things wrong, the fines can be massive. So for private, casual investors, this is hard to manage and can be very costly, whereas a powerful company can easily pool its resources to deal with the red tape. In many sectors, big companies actually lobby for more regulation to drive out smaller businesses and individuals who just can't handle it. And just before I get on to the third point, if you're a landlord and you want to avoid any legal issues with your property, you can download our lettings checklist in the description. But thirdly, and this is what's driving a lot of the exodus at the moment, it will become harder to get rid of bad tenants because the government plans to do away with no-fault evictions. This is something we covered in a recent video. So if you're a huge corporation with thousands of tenants and one or two don't pay their rent, that's a drop in the ocean. But if you own just one property, a year without rent, which is a possibility, could bankrupt you. So as you can see, the little fish are swimming away fast, and it's maybe unsurprising that some of them are jumping out of the tank completely. But what does this mean for the market? Is the market going to break? Well, there's no love lost between the British public and private landlords. People love Love nothing more to see greedy investors put in their place. So, according to social media, individual landlords selling up is the best thing ever. But is it really? Well, let's look at the new reality where suddenly your landlord is a billion pound company. Can you imagine the CEO of a pension fund explaining to his members that Betty at number 19 just had a hip replacement, so she's going to be late paying the rent this month? It's not going to happen. Corporations have KPIs and targets to hit, so they'll have no problem raising the rent at every opportunity by as much as the market will bear. Whereas in our Sunday Times column, we hear from people all the time who just don't feel comfortable raising rents consistently. And can you imagine a corporation investing in a rundown semi that needs a bit of work doing to it? No, again, not going to happen. Big companies are more likely to focus on higher end properties because that attracts higher earners who are typically more reliable tenants. That's great because it means more choice for that group. But if individual landlords are pushed out, it will leave a huge gap at the lower end of the market. But like I said at the beginning, I think there is a silver lining to all of this, and I'm confident in saying so because I've seen something similar happen before. Around 10 years ago now, big companies started offering shiny new blocks of student housing with amazing facilities like gyms and swimming pools. Now, on the surface, this was bad news for the individuals who owned the big house shares that students had traditionally lived in. But what actually happened? Well, the landlords that responded to this new competition, refurbishing and adapting to offer higher quality properties, they thrived, whereas it was only those who refused to move with the times who were driven out. In other words, it forced private landlords to step up their game and the whole market benefited. There's no doubt that student housing is of a far better standard than it was a decade ago 
And there are plenty of individual landlords still making good money from it. In the same way, as companies get more and more involved in the general rental sector, offering family homes as well as just city centre flats, it will raise the overall standards and give tenants more choice. In turn, this will force private landlords to offer quality housing, which again, like we saw before, will push out casual landlords but will open up more opportunities for serious investors. So on the surface, it might look like private companies are breaking the market. But in the long run, I actually think it will be good news for everyone. It isn't healthy for the market to be dominated by individuals or by corporations. A thriving market should have a mix of social and different private options all pressuring the others to perform. So I think there's plenty of room in the tank for us all to swim alongside each other without too much confrontation. However, as I mentioned before, if you are thinking of investing, it's important you go in with your eyes open and you understand the rules because otherwise you can rack up some big fines and even prison time. So download our lettings checklist in the description and check out this video next where I talk you through the most expensive mistakes landlords make so you can avoid them.